So if I want to eventually create a custom, custom emoji using vector shapes of Bucky, maybe a little influenced by these images of Felix, this was as close as I could get using the Emoji Maker tool, which just lets me layer things up. Like I basically have the black glasses to make up for kind of the, the banded black face behind the, the beady eyes of Bucky here. I have the pink nose. I have a little bit of a muzzle, but I'm gonna be able to, to define that more. And obviously this color for the ears and stuff is, wrong, is right, ah, is the wrong color. The ears are even in the wrong place. I mean, I might even do something like this for the ears as a stand-in, except they're too close together. So maybe something like that. The, whatever gets you close works. Once you have what you think is close that you can then use as a kind of a sketch to start from, I want you to zoom in on your browser, make your browser as big as you can, and zoom in to make it as large as you can on the screen. And then do Command Shift 4 to do a targeted screen grab. And th this is in the directions for both a Mac and a PC of your image. What that gives me is to my desktop a PNG image, a raster image of these vector tools. Because I'm going to use this to show you the difference between vector, vector and raster. The reason we do the screen grab is because if you hit export, so let's view this at real size, you know, actual size. If you hit export, and I'll zoom out here so you can see, and we download the PNG, it gets to pick the size. It will go to downloads. I'll bring that, put it in my folder. And if I open that up, you'll see that it's quite a bit smaller. It is transparent and free floating, but it's a worse resolution than the screen grab. And how is that possible? How could this be cleaner resolution than this? It's the same file. That's because what we're creating on this site is a vector. And to show you what that looks like, we can also download the SVG, even though we're not gonna be using that yet. That SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. Command Shift 4. It's a three key command that's for a targeted screen grab on a Mac. It's the only three key command I'll need you to know. And it is shown to you in the directions for this assignment. For, for a PC, you do print screen and you'll see that. All right. So if I download the SVG, that is a vector file. And if I bring that in and I open it, you can just double click. You might not like what happens, but if you double click, it will open not in Photoshop, not in a raster program, but in Illustrator. And then it will come in and it will look a little weird depending on what you used because these are what vectors look like. If I look under layers, then I ungroup it. They're just cutouts of shapes that can be individually selected and moved around. So let me take like the glasses, for instance. Looks a lot like Photoshop, but instead of the, these being pixel generated, notice that no matter how much I zoom in, they're always perfectly clean. All right. That's what vectors are. And we'll eventually be designing our own vectors within Illustrator. So instead, vectors have anchor points and the anchor points just determine whether it's a curve between the anchor points. I'll show you the anchor points here, here, and here. Or if it's a straight between the anchor points, right? And then you can modify those curves or those straights however you like. And you can always add more anchor points, change anchor points. But this can be used to scale any image. So we're not going to be using the SVG. We're going to use PhotoP to build vector shapes on top of our sketch. So you're required to have this by next class. So that next class, we can do this. Go to PhotoP. I'll save my work.
And then I'm going to open a new file. So I'm going to close this. And I'm going to open my screen grab PNG. Because that's going to be bigger than the PNG I downloaded. So it's going to have kind of this bluish gray background. In the in the emoji maker? So I opened up my screen grab PNG in PhotoP. The problem is this is not print quality yet. So my first step is to go to image and then image size to change pixels to inches and then to make this at least 8 by 10 inches by at least 350 pixels per inch. So right now it's 10 by 9, so I'll leave that but I'm going to change its pixels per inch to 350, my studio resolution. I have resample checked. I am growing this considerably, like many times over. And this is what, when you, ups, when you upscale an image, like a screen grab and make it print quality, this is what happens to it. You see how soft it gets? It's the opposite of a vector. It's not clean anymore. But this is our, our kind of sketch to get us started. And as a sketch to get us started, we are going to build our vector shapes on top of this. We are not going to bring in anything else from the outside because those would be pixel based. Instead, we're going to only create shapes within the program. And to do that, we use some of the, the rarest tools in Photoshop. That's why they're down near the bottom. These are the vector shape tools. And you're going to open the drawer by holding down on it. So you have a rectangle, you have an ellipse, that can also be a square and a circle. You have a parametric shape, which is basically triangles, pentagons, and then you have the custom shapes. So let's start with the ellipse. Now notice I have not created a new layer. All I've done is cho chosen the, the ellipse shape tool. And I'm going to drag and drop and try to make a shape that's close, right? You'll see that very much like when you bring something in from the outside, this shape, first of all, it created its own layer, which is nice. Each time you make a new shape, it will be its own layer. But it has that little box in the lower right-hand corner of the thumbnail of the layer, which means it's a smart object. And that's because this is created not with pixels, but with vector points. You can see the blue outline around it. That's the, the vector path. Vectors always have two attributes. They have what's called a fill and a stroke, right? Sometimes that's called um, a fill path and a stroke path. And to see that, you can double click on that thumbnail and you can see that the fill is up at the top and that the stroke is at the top. Right now, the stroke is a red X. It means it's empty. But I can make that fill. Let's just make it a solid color. Let's make it red. And then I can make that, not that fill, that stroke, whatever width I want, from one pixel wide to 30. And it's actually not pixels. These would be point sizes as an actual vector, just like type. And now you can see that red outline around it. And then you have the fill color. Right now the fill color is black. I want the fill color not to be yellow, but to be more like Bucky. So do I want it to be solid black? Maybe, but let's try like something a little more subtle. Let's double click on it. Not there, but let's double click here. And then I can choose any color I want for that fill path. So I'm going to do kind of a, a warm, dark gray. And it's still a smart object, right? Now, do I want that red outline? No, I do not. So the stroke is going to be empty. Now, just like your composited layers from exercise one, I can take that shape, which is a somewhat squashed ellipse, and to match the kind of cat head shape, notice how when I turn it off, I can still see the vector outline because I have that vector shape selected. And that shows me I need to make this shape a little bit wider at the bottom and a little bit narrower at the top. 
So how can I do that? Well, I can use Control T just like I did in compositing the line art, and I can warp it or I can distort it. Distorting is going to give me a little bit more control here. And I'm going to pinch it at the top just a little bit on both sides. And I'm going to widen it at the bottom a little bit on both sides. Again, we're not going for perfection. And then if I want that lopsided quality to it, I might go to warp and just push it down on those sides a little bit to get kind of a good starting shape. Okay, very quickly, because you start with your big shape, that starts to cover up my sketch. So uh, what I'm going to do is make a duplicate of my background layer, Command J, and then I'm going to move that on top of everything else, and I'm going to make its opacity pretty light, like maybe 30%, maybe 25%. So this is like a ghost image. It's like having a piece of tracing paper that I'm then fitting shapes underneath. Okay. And now maybe let's say I want to do the nose. Let's start it with an ellipse. But what if we don't want to start it with ellipse? What if we want to start it with a triangle shape? So then I can change it. I'm going to go to the paramet parametric shape, right? I don't like that it still says saving. I'm not sure what that's about. But now with the shape, let's see what options I can get, which I can't see while it's still saying saving. So why don't I save my work right now? So file, I'm going to save more, save PSD. As long as you save it as a PSD, it will keep the smart object layers, your vector layers. And I want to give it a name. So I first have to download it. This annoys me a little bit about PhotoP, that you first have to download it to rename it. But here it is. Here's my PSD file. And I'm going to name it, you know, Spring 23.2, and then exercise number two. And this is Bucky Cat Emoji. Our minimum for everything we do in this class will be 8 by 10 by 300 pixels per inch. That's the minimum because that's our smallest print size. What I do is for this is 8 by at least 8 by 10 <laughs> by 350 because that's my studio resolution. So now I'm going to move that PSD into here. I'm going to close it. I can just hit the X in photo P. It's unsaved, that's okay, because I've saved it already. And photo P is being weird, so I'm going to just close it, and leave, and then open photo P again. And then this is the preferred way to work. I drop my file here, it's got everything I need. And now when I hit save, so let me make a quick change, add a new shape, this parametric shape. How many sides do I want it to have? I want it to have three sides. <laughs> so it's going to be a triangle. And then what kind of color attributes do I want? I want it to be, let's see, what is Bucky's? I want it to be light pink. And I can always change these later, right? And it doesn't look like it's opaque, but it is. It's 100% opaque, but remember there's this tracing kind of guide path on top of it. Okay, now if I want it to be a little bit more curved, what can I do? I can hit Command T, not Command T, Control T. I'm going to do that a lot. It's the difference between Photo P and Photoshop. And I can distort it. I can warp it, so I'm going to curve out these sides a little bit while keeping it a vector shape. 